We start by chanting the four great bodhisattva vows. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. Delusions are countless. We vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless. We vow to embody it. So we'll start with our usual 15 minutes of seated meditation.
We chant the Gatha on opening the sutras. This Dharma, incomparably profound and minutely subtle, is rarely encountered even in hundreds of thousands of millions of ages. Now we see it, hear it, hold and maintain it. May we completely realize the true mind of all Buddhas. Very good. So tonight, coming to us from apparently hot and rainy Washington, D.C., is our Dharma brother, Robert Coho Epstein. Thank you. And hello, everyone. And nice to be with you. Yes, uh, pertinent to my talk, it's uh, the conditions are hot and rainy and humid around here. And um, I recently got engaged in an interesting discussion on one of the Zen discussion sites, which is still uh, somewhat ongoing, um, in which I, I said that I, I posted that I considered Zazen uh, sitting meditation as a refuge. And then I looked forward to going to sit. And the thing I said got me in trouble with a couple of people. Some people said, yeah, they knew what I was talking about. But um, a couple of people took exception to the fact that I said that it was a refuge from samsara <laughs> and a relief from the conditions in the world of changes. Now, obviously, that's not literally true because samsara is ongoing. It's like the movie that never ends. And um, you can't really get away from conditions. But there's a kind of a relative relief in being able to sit still, put everything relatively aside and have an opportunity to experience what I would call just, just being, just being there, just being present. Um, it's a little bit a uh, uh, familiar idea in Soto Zen, but I think it's also um, something that, that all the schools um, have an understanding of that one has a chance to sit in or as or with uh, Buddha mind, um, no self, however one uh, regards that open space that can sometimes be there in meditation. So um, my proposition is basically that, uh, that life and samsara are pretty tough and particularly obviously tough these days. There's a lot of turbulence going on and we sometimes work pretty hard in our practice too, uh, whether it's our practice with other people or whether it's our practice in sitting. And I just wanted to propose the idea that at least some of the time, um, it's okay to regard sitting as a kind of a break, a relief, a refuge, a release from all of that. Um, our practice might involve concentrating on breathing or working with koans or watu, wadu, and some of that work can also be very arduous. But I find that just the act of sitting still is a great relief from everything else. So while there's no real break from samsara, of course, Zen monks, over the centuries who have retreated from the lay world and spent time in monasteries, they were, certainly were getting a refuge from a lot of the conditions of everyday life, of course, then you have to deal with the conditions in the monastery. So uh, samsara will follow you wherever you go uh, to one extent or another. 
And I had a couple of references that I thought were interesting. Uh, Hakuin in his Ode to Zazen um, sort of hinted at the idea that the great, uh, the great issue of life and death um, could perhaps be uh, exited or put aside. And he said, um, and, and this is his ode to sitting meditation. So he's suggesting that it's related to Zazen. Uh, the causes and conditions of the revolving wheel of the six appearances are but one's own road through the darkness of ignorance. Walking down dark roads to dark roads, someday you should abandon birth and death. So someday we should abandon birth and death, but maybe for now we can set it aside for short periods of time and have a moment of peace, a moment of non-self, a moment of just being uh, sitting as Buddha mind or as Buddha. Um, and I just want to go back to the idea that sometimes we feel that we have to work hard all the time, um, including when we're sitting, that practice is hard, that we have to break through, that we have to be helpful at all times, that we have to be on at all times, and that the path of ending delusion and helping beings and everything else, and all of our um, vows that don't have any end to them because they can never be completely realized, means that we have to drive forward and be uh, very active bodhisattvas at every moment. And I think it's also very important that we adopt an approach that gives us an actual relief from suffering. Um, and one perhaps even of enjoyment of the practice uh, where we can perhaps sit in our true nature and take a break. So Buddha said that the Dharma was good in the beginning, good in the middle and good in the end. And so perhaps we should enjoy some of that goodness and try not to be uh, miserable and stressed out while practicing. Um, so for me, it's always that kind of a refuge. And while I work hard in certain ways in my practice, for sure, and I work on cons, um, I think uh, I really like that going aside and putting everything uh, to the side and just being. I think it's a kind of a base uh, way of being that everything else can be replenished by. The founder of Soto Zen, Dogen, said about Zazen, Zazen is the Dharma gate of ease and joy. And I just wonder to what extent we experience that, ease and joy. Uh, these are qualities that we can develop in our attitude to sitting and also bring with us into life, ease and joy, the opposite of dukkha. Um, I spent a couple of years doing uh, Huatu, Huadu in Korean meditation, uh, in which a koan question is engaged uh, pretty much at all times. At the time, the teacher I was consulting on this was from one of the Chan groups that emanated from the teachings of the great Chinese Huatu teacher, Su Yun. And so I went a bit into Su Yun's writings. Um, Huatu work is a kind of 24 seven study, although it's also engaged in sitting meditation periods. But, um, I, and I remember, you know, being very engaged with it and even waking up in the morning, realizing that I had been dreaming the Huatu. Uh, so it can be a little, a little intense. Um, and you are, when you're working with Huatu, you're raising doubt, you know, developing a great doubt in order to break through the Huatu. Um, but I found that Su Yun made an interesting distinction in his writings that always attracted me. He said that we should distinguish between what he called coarse doubt and fine or refined doubt. And I've never seen that anywhere else. And it's not one of the main techniques to work with refined doubt, but he was a real, uh, 
Kwatu master, one of the great ones. And I thought it was just fascinating that he talked about that. Although one can break through uh, a Huatu with very intense coarse doubt, um, raising, you know, very difficult great doubt. Uh, just as, and I would compare that maybe to breaking through a two by four with a sledgehammer, just for my current uh, comparison. Um, he suggested that find out might lead to a different sort of uh, discernment and a different sort of result. And I would compare that to cutting the two by four with a fine, sharp, thin saw. Um, and it suggested to me as the teacher at that time had hinted at as well, that one can use that kind of more refined discernment to investigate the Huatu with a kind of investi investigative awareness rather than confronting it in the more intense way. Um, and I developed an image of sort of using the doubt like a divining rod to sort of poke at the Huatu in the darkness and try to discover um, what its nature was. Um, of course, Su Yun himself practiced relentlessly uh, for many, many years and for many, many, many hours of the day. So it's not to say that this would take the place of the 24 seven rule uh, that Huatu is famous for. But maybe the quality of our engagement with practice can sometimes be a little more gentle than we think it has to be. Uh, the silent illumination master, uh, Hang Ji, made a statement about Zazen that I also found uh, very fascinating and provocative. He said, the practice of true reality is simply to sit serenely in silent introspection. This empty, wide open mind is subtly correct and illuminating. The idea of introspection that is silent without concepts, as we usually think of introspection as kind of contemplating something, and looking into it, this non-conceptual introspection, uh, still looking and taking stock, reminded me a little bit of Su Yun's refined doubt, probing with discernment at the reality of the Huatu and what it was pointing towards. So there may be times when we work very hard in Zazen, processing a lot of delusion. And there may be times when we work very hard out of Zazen, processing a lot of reality. But I hope there's also a time when we can rest, get respite, relief, and refuge, the four R's that I just made up, from the storm, refuge from the storm. I'll end with the story of the rest of recitation of the koan that led to Dahui's awakening, which I think is a little bit in the same spirit. Um, one day when Yuan Wu had ascended to the high seat in the lecture hall, he said, a monk asked Yun Men, whence come all the Buddhas? Yun Men answered, the East Mountain walks over the water, but if I were asked, I would not answer that way. Whence come all the Buddhas? A fragrant breeze comes of itself from the south. And in the palace pavilion, a refreshing coolness stirs. Life is very turbulent these days. Maybe some of the time in the midst of all of that turbulence, we can sit back and enjoy the refreshing coolness of the Dharma. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. So we'll commence with our next period of seated meditation.
we'll chant the Heart Sutra. Maha Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva when practicing deeply the Prajna Paramita perceives that all five skandhas are empty and is safe from all suffering and distress. Shariputra form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. That which is form is emptiness. That which is emptiness form. The same is true of feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, shariputra. All dharmas are marked with emptiness. They do not appear or disappear, are not tainted or pure, do not increase or decrease. Therefore, in emptiness, no form, no feelings, perceptions, impulses, consciousness, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no color, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, no object of mind, no realm of eyes, and so forth, until no realm of mind, consciousness, no ignorance, and also no extinction of it, and so forth, until no old age and death, and also no extinction of them, no suffering, no origination, no stopping, no path, no cognition, also no attainment with nothing to attain the body. Sattva depends on prajnaparamita, and the mind is no hindrance without any hindrance. No fears exist far apart from every perverted view. One dwells in nirvana in the three worlds. All Buddhas depend on prajnaparamita and attain anuttara samyak sambodhi. Therefore know that prajnaparamita is the great transcendent mantra, is the great bright mantra, is the utmost mantra, is the supreme mantra, which is able to relieve all suffering and is true, not false. So proclaim the prajnaparamita mantra, proclaim the mantra which says, gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhi, Svaha, gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhi, svaha, gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhi, svaha. We'll do our personal dedications of merit. And as usual, I will leave a space for anyone to add in uh, anyone they would like to uh, dedicate merit to. All sentient beings are one seamless body and pass quickly from birth to death. We remember those who cared for us and are gone. Those who are ill, those who are at war, who are hungry, 
and who are in pain. May they heal and have peace. We especially would like to dedicate our service to Dylan Jacobson, Perry, Mrs. Guy, Mike Gingy Wood, Brianna Bailey Sheridan, Barry, Maureen. Anyone care to add in? The people, people of Af Afghanistan. People of Sri Lanka. Any others? People of India and Bangladesh. And Ukraine. All beings in the 10 directions subject to the greed, hatred, and delusions of themselves and others. All Buddhas throughout space and time, all honored ones, Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, wisdom beyond wisdom, Maha Prajna Paramita. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly by and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature and do not squander your time by night or day. And thank you for joining us, everybody.